Following on from the last video, we had to work out how the bowsprit fit on the model and what the various, how the various parts interrelated with one another. And that resulted in a fair amount of research on the net um, and looking at lots of photographs. And we were really very happy when I came across some of the photographs of the original replica. Um, that really showed me or gave me a good idea of how these two parts interrelated. And these are a few of the um, of the photographs of models on the net that I use to help guide the thought process of what the intention of the model maker was in relation to what might actually have been on the real ship. Um, what was really instructive is the actual replica that was made of the America and really helped my understanding. Having put the stringers on the on the back of the boat with the stanchions, we're now going to repeat the same thing in the front. You can see the space starting. It starts about here and it gets quite wide. And that's because of the angle that the bulwark fits on the model. So to resolve that, we need to sand the molding so that we get a nice tight fit here. Before I go any further, I'd just like to um, quell any justified criticism with my reference to moldings in the previous video. Um, it really means stringer, and a stringer is <laughs> a molding that goes on the inside from the, normally from the stern to the bow. Um, so I'm just safeguarding myself from fair criticism. Although it's not right up against the bulwark, it's um, it's pretty good. So it's just a matter of cleaning it up. Now that we've got the clamps off, we've got a nice tight line all along here. Fantastic. And we follow this up with the same thing on the starboard side which really went quite well. You need to continually check to fit the bowsprit in place to make sure that it all works well. Having done this, we put all the stanchions in place and then with the Microlux sander, um, took the top of them down without too much of a, of a problem. Um, one or two of them came out. I know some of you don't like power tools, but you know me, I love my tools. So we just need to clean up the tops and then start putting the white paint on. Although it was my intention to pre-paint the bulwarks before installation, um, I had trouble determining exactly where the stanchions were to be placed. So at the end of the day, I left it out and decided to paint it afterwards. Now we have the very challenging task of trying to bend the gallon top rail and this really tested me. Um, we didn't have anything long enough to steam bend it, so I actually uh, put it in one of my ponds and let it soak for about six hours. And I have to say, when it came out, it, um, it, it was very, very flexible. So we clipped it onto the model and then took the, the blow dryer out, my monocoat dryer, and Ready, went over it for about 10 or 15 minutes to the extent that um, unfortunately some of my clamps actually started to melt. So I'll have to rethink that in relation to using the clamps and, and the blow dryer. Just to make sure that it really held the bend though, I left it clipped again for another 24 hours and um, that really seemed to make everything get very stable. The last piece of major bending was in fact the back rail, the back gallant rail, and I laminated two pieces of wood to achieve this. We have to reduce the size of the stern back top rail to match the same thickness as the sides. Just doing a trial fit. Uh, 
and it seems pretty good um, but just as a safety precaution I have beveled the stanchions at the back um, just to give me a little bit of safety of course every time you touch the model you end up scratching the paint in some way shape or form so again to break the task down I'm constantly touching up as we continue with the paint job this is a very critical time but we shouldn't rush it um, there's always a tendency to want to go to the next step while we're in the middle of painting but these areas here we can't come back and paint them and I try to get three coats of paint um, the first two um, with a sanding in between each and then the final coat. Of course one final inspection to make sure everything is ready for the installation of the, um, the top rail. I found it necessary to pin it because um, some of the stanchions I was starting to see a little edge on them and it bothered me that um, it would become a problem and it's a good thing I did this because when I turned it on the side I could actually see that a number of the stanchions needed to be sanded down just a little bit more so that that rail would fit flat um, on the bulwark. So back out with the Proxon sander going over every single one of those stanchion heads to make sure that they lined up perfectly with the top of the bulwark and that we'd have a nice flat surface from which to stick the rail on to and you can see all the trims we've had to make on the stanchions to line it up I couldn't understand why I was having trouble with the, um, the gallant rail and why the stanchions were sticking out until I suddenly remembered that I had changed the um, bulwark because I had done such a lousy job on the bend at the, at the back and I had replaced it with a piece that was slightly thicker and that added three and a half inches to the overall thickness of the stanchion and the bulwark together so there, there is my problem so the solution to that other than trimming which I have to do here just so that it doesn't stick over is in fact to slightly round this edge and then repaint it so that it will come in a little bit so that I get a nice clean line between the black bulwark side and the varnish um, gallant top rail. So that's the plan. The last final trial fit just making sure because once we start putting that glue down there's just no way to come back from it. Um, we used PVA glue um, on putting a, a small amount on both surfaces and then using my finger to make sure there were no heavy spots simply because uh, it will spill over and then you'll have a cleanup problem particularly on the inside of the, um, of the rail. Both gallon top rails are on and um, I have to say we really struggled with the um, clamping to get it on and I uh, don't think I have a, a really defined way of how to do that so now we're going to look at the stern and just take you through that process we will put these two on with CA stick them with CA and then shape them and then Having set that up, we'll then put the back rail on. This is one of the more challenging um, pieces to install. Um, you don't get a second chance and you have to make sure that everything lines up perfectly. I put CA here, here and underneath and it's just so hard to clamp. I'm using my finger to hold it in place because I really need it to stick quickly at the back here. Now comes a very delicate um, job of shaping that bend 
Um, I did draw a small pencil line on it to make sure that um, I didn't take off too much. And my um, some of my colleagues will say, Mr. Kenny, you shouldn't be using power tools on this very delicate part. But again, you all know my passion for power tools. And all I'll say is I use the Microlux to take the rough part down and I use the pen sander to do the fine work. So now we'll just put the first coat of wipe on poly. And we'll put as many as five coats because these coats are very, very thin. And as you can see from the back here, again, there'll be a need to touch up some of the black and, um, and of course, some of the white on the inside. Um, so that's a constant problem uh, as we go forward. We're now going to fit the bow piece. And we've checked it. So we're going to we're going to stick that with some CA and then we'll clean it up on the model. The bow is all complete. Um, a slightly different color to the piece we've added at the bow. And that's really because the grain is running in a different direction. Other than that, I think it exceeded my expectations. With the completion of the bowsprit installed and a little piece of the top gallant reel in place at the bow, uh, this brings this video on the planking of the America to an end. Um, I feel really very satisfied that all the difficult challenges that I found were overcome one by one, uh, particularly the stern and to a much lesser extent to the bow. I hope you found this video useful and we'll see you in the next video.